That was a, a really powerful lesson that Karen just read for us from Philippians. This is known as the Philippians hymn. It's also considered to be the Messiah hymn. It is one of the oldest pieces of scripture in the New Testament that we have. This would have been something that little house churches would have gathered together and said, almost like a liturgy, or they would sing it, or a call and response, this little hymn that is used in this letter. And Paul's writing to the Philippians to encourage them to let their minds be like that of Christ, and then uses this hymn to remind them of that. Now, the reason why he's writing to them is that Paul already established a church in Philippi, and you can read about how he does that in the book of Acts, but this church has been established in this town that is filled with a lot of people that are retired military. It almost kind of has this feel of like San Antonio, where people just come to retire there, but a little bit different from San Antonio is that these people have an affinity toward the king, toward Rome, and Paul is coming preaching about this Messiah, this Messiah king, and that stands in their way, and they don't like that. So there's a lot of resistance that he's given. And now Paul is writing a letter to this church that's also receiving the same resistance. And he begins it by saying, if I die, I'm with Christ. And if I live, I get to share Christ. So either way, I'm with Christ. So whether I live or whether I die, I'm with Christ. And this is good news. So he tells them to let their mind be like that of Christ. Now, he's, he knows to say things like this because this is what the prophets would say a long time ago. They would say, return to the Lord, return to the Lord. And Paul's saying, let your mind be like that of Christ. And then he shares this hymn. And if you want to join me, it's on page 954 of your pew Bible. I'm going to reference it a few times. It's 954 of the pew Bible. And he talks about Jesus Christ as though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited. Now, that means that he's just like God, but he didn't exploit the fact that he was the same thing as God, like our first parents did in the paradise in, in the garden, where they took advantage of this and they became, they started to turn toward the self, wanting things for themselves instead of turning toward God. So Jesus didn't do that. He took the form of a slave and he was born in human likeness and being found in that human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death. Jesus became obedient to the will of God, turning toward God, saying, what will you have me do? And God said, I need you to go to Jerusalem, and you're going to die, and you're going to rise again. And Jesus says, okay. And so he becomes obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. And then the, then the, the, the hymn changes. Therefore, God also highly exalted him. And gave him the name that's above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and even under the earth. Then every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Paul wants them to know who this Jesus is and why they're holding fast to their faith. And that Jesus, uh, um, um, oh, I forgot the word there, was obedient to God's will. And he's asking the Philippians to be obedient to the will of God to let their mind be like that of Christ. And this is a great lesson for us on Palm Sunday because Jesus is riding into Jerusalem and we're watching him at the very beginning of the, first, of the last week of his life be obedient to this call that God has placed on him. In our gospel today, we see Jesus riding in on that little tiny colt and he makes his way and people are throwing branches down on the ground, they're throwing cloaks down on the ground and, and at first glance, we think this is like this kind of the celebration type of a thing. And, and there's a reason why they have these palm branches. And there's a reason why they have uh, cloaks and everything. Because this is a festival that's coming up. It's Passover. This Passover season, the, the, the festival is about to happen. And so you would build huts. You build houses, structures, where you would take the palm branches and you'd put them all together or whatever branches you could find in the field. And you would put the cloth on top of them. And you would create a, a structure for you to live in for the time of the festival. And so they would have these readily available. And so as Jesus is coming, they're throwing them on the ground because that's what you did for a parade. If the, if the military was coming through town, they would have a lot of them because they didn't want the animals to have to rock, walk on the rocky ground or the, or the king to walk on the rocky ground. So they would throw cloaks down and they would throw branches down so that way it was a nice walkway. But if it's a military parade, there'd be so many horses and so loud and you hear the clanging of all the armor all over the place. But this is one guy. And then they're out there and they're shouting the word Hosanna, which is also something that they would be prepared to sing and say at a festival. This was the word that they would say. At, at any festival that you would have, they're remembering the exile. They're remembering the exodus. They're remembering the story of their people. 
And they remember the prophet saying, return to the Lord. And so they're shouting out Hosanna, which means, as we taught in the children's sermon, save us. And so they're crying out in this returning to God, even in that moment, even in these festivals, save us. Help us. Come. We're trying to return to you. Come. Save us. And so here they are watching Jesus clip-clop into Jerusalem, throwing down their branches, and they see the Messiah, the Messiah King. And they're shouting out, Hosanna. But how do they know he's the Messiah? It's not like the disciples are walking behind him with signs. Right? You know, like, this is him. This is the Messiah. We found him. Woohoo! They would recognize exactly what he's doing from Scripture. See, the prophet Zechariah was a prophet after the exile. And the people are returning home. But they're still struggling with where is God in all this. And this prophet is telling them, return to the Lord and you will see the Messiah. They're saying, where will we see this Messiah? And the prophet Zechariah says, if we return to the Lord, you will, see the, you will see the Messiah King riding humble on a colt into Jerusalem. And so these people are at this little parade watching the Messiah clip-clop in, and they are taking their branches and throwing them down. And this, this prayer of Hosanna, this desperate prayer to save us, is now turned into this exultation. And they are excited. This guy is the Messiah. He's going to save us. Hosanna! It's almost as if we're saved. To see, he did it. It's happening right now in our presence. And they're excited. And it's a big party. And he's on this cult. But the way that they understand him saving them is a little different we know, than the way he does. But we have a hint in Scripture of how he's going to do this. The cult. I never knew this before, and we were studying about this in our Monday coffee with the pastors, and you can join us on Zoom every Monday morning at 9 o'clock. little plug there. Um, we were talking about this cult, and there's... So Jesus tells the disciples, go into the village and find a cult. It hasn't been ridden yet. And if you find it, I want you to untie it and bring it to me. And if anybody stops, you say the Lord needs it. So the disciples, they go into the village. They find the colt. They untie it. They start taking it away. And some guy comes on. He's like, wait, that's my colt. And they're like, the Lord needs it. And he's like, okay. And then, so then the colt is now what Jesus rides into Jerusalem. But the key is that it's unridden. And I didn't know anything about this until this past week. But if that colt hasn't been ridden yet, that means it's been set apart as a sacrifice. They're preparing for a festival. You would bring your tenth, your tithe, your offering at these festivals. This cult was set apart for just a purpose. And now they say the Lord needs it. These people recognizing from Scripture, oh, the Messiah is going to ride. Yes, take it, please. And so Jesus rides into town on a sacrificial animal. And we know that he is the sacrificial lamb. Jesus is being obedient to the point of death. The prophets tell us to return to the Lord. Paul tells us to let our minds be like that of Christ. And in our baptism, we say that we're going to serve others following the example of Jesus. We are asked to be obedient on this Palm Sunday to the one who's clip-clopping his way toward his execution. We know the story that's going to happen. It starts off with cries of Hosanna. And then we will cry, crucify. And thanks be to God that we also get to cry out, he is risen. Are we able to be obedient with Christ, to let our mind be like that of Christ, to return to the Lord, to serve others, following the example of Jesus? For this is the one that comes down the road as we lay our palm branches down, who comes to save us. And we cry out, Hosanna. Amen.